All right, 3.4, combinations and Pascal's triangle. So how are those two linked? Well, Pascal's triangle is a triangle, a triangular array of numbers in which each term is the sum of the two terms above it. So here we go. Here's an example of where we have the Pascal's triangle. We start with one at the top. This one is joined by nothing plus one to give us one. This one is joined by one plus nothing to give us one. Now over here, this one is nothing plus one. This two here is from one plus one to give us two. This one is joined from one and zero to give us one. The next one, this one, is, we carry the one, this 3 is from two, 1 and 2, this 3 is from 2 and 1, and this one is obviously just from this one. And so on, we drop to the next one. So, let's drop to the next line and see what we'll get. We'll get 1 here, 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, and 4 plus 1 is 5, and the last one is a 1. We can do 6, there's 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. Now, something to note that each of these has a specific position. The position is term 0, 0. That's the top, is term 0, 0. 0 row, 0 number. Next one is term 1, 0 to term 1, 1. Next one is term 1, 2, 2, 1, so 2, 0, term 2, 1, term 2, 2, and so on. We can go all the way down the Pascal's triangle to label each term number. Okay, and once we label each term number, we can now make the connection, believe it or not, to combinations. This top row is connected to 0, choose 0. The next one is 1, choose 0. The next one over is 1, choose 1. Next one is 2, choose 0. And the combination is 2, choose 1. And the next one is 2, choose 2. So I want you to think about 0, choose 0. There's only one possibility. That's the number that was there, 1. 1 choose 0. That's that null set we talked about. You've got something and we're going to choose nothing. That's the number 1. 1 choose 1. There's only one way. That's 1. 2 choose 0. 1. 2 choose 1. There are two possible ways to get there. So each of these corresponds to the number that was originally written in green. So that you have a combination connection to Pascal's triangle. Each one of these has a connection. And here are the names. We've finished the names here. And just so that you know, we can always find whatever number we're looking for using this idea of combinations. So example one, calculate the sum of the first five terms of the diagonal four. Of diagonal four, find the value and Pascal's triangle and relate it to NCR. So here is our Pascal's triangle. Here we go folks. And it was completed up to row 9. Okay. Now remember the first letter actually up to row 10 if I'm not mistaken. Here we go. Now the first row at the top is called row 0. Why is it called row 0? Because, again, it starts with 0. The n value is 0. The next row is 1. The next row is 2. The next row is 3. The next row is 4. So how do we know which one is which? Well, row 4 corresponds to the second number. That The row number corresponds to the second number. Here, the second number is 0. Here, the second number is 1. Here, the second number is 2. Here, the second number is 3. Here, the second number is 4. So the fourth row, which is this row here, 
we want to take the diagonal and find the sum of the first five terms. So we circle the first five terms and we add them up. Hopefully you've seen that that actually equals, that's right, when you add them all up, 1 plus 5 plus 15 plus 35 plus 70 equals, that's right, 126. Hmm, does anyone see where the 126 is on that table of values? Uh, uh, sorry, in the Pascal's triangle? Well, look, folks, on that diagonal, the 126 is found here and here. A lot of you are looking at here and here. I want you specifically to look at to the right. This sum corresponds directly to 126. Let's look back here. If I did the sum of the first four terms, that would be 56. That's the one the answer is. If I did the sum of the first three terms, that equals 21. Sum of the first two terms, that is equal to 6. So I think it's pretty cool that we can take the combinations of C44 plus C54 plus C64 plus C74 plus C84. So notice it's the diagonal of row 4. So it's the fourth number we're looking across. And the diagonal of row 4 is equal to the sum of which C value? Hopefully you see it. That's right. It equals 9. Row 9, choose 5. Row 9, folks, choose 5. And that will be the answer to a solution like this problem. I think that's pretty cool. Hopefully you do too. Example number two says, Fred rides his bike to school and travels four blocks west and six blocks north. Use two methods to determine the number of different routes Fred could take to school if he travels only north and west. So what I did here is I created this environment where Fred is in the corner and he can only travel north and west. So, and he has to go to school. So we have school in one corner, we have Fred in the other corner, and we have to only travel north and west. So as Fred travels west, he only moves one direction, moves one way, and as Fred travels north, he's using one way to get there. Next, if Fred goes to this spot right here, that's a combination of 1 plus 2. And this one will be a combination of 2 plus 1 to give us 3. And the same goes sideways. This is, this row is 1 and 1. This row is 1 and 2. This row here is 1 and 3. This row here is 1 and 4. And the same we fill in all the information, kind of like the way we did for Pascal's triangle, but pay attention to the numbers and how we add them. And so let's try one more so that you understand how to do this. So what will this number over here be? Well, we have 3 here and 3 here. So 3 plus 3 will give us 6. Next, that number is 10. Why is it 10? Well, 4 plus, sorry, not, yeah, 4 plus 6, 4 plus 6 will give us 10. What about this one? That will be, that's right, 15. 5 plus 10. So we have 15 here. And then we go again, continue up, and we continue the values all the way through until we get to school. And it turns out when we get to school that there are 210 ways that Fred could have taken to get to school, traveling only in a north and west direction. So what's another way we could have written this? Well, Fred has 10 different directions. Do you agree there? Hopefully you do. And we need to choose six of them because there are no blocks going north times 10. What's left over? So 10 choose 6 
and that is the six blocks going north times how much is left. Well, we have six for taken away. We have four left. From that four, we're going to choose four. Now, could I have rewritten this a different way? Well, yes, I could have. I could have chosen the four ways to go west first. So 10 choose 4, and what are we left with? The north. The north is 6 choose 6. Both of these values, when you type them in your calculator, will give you 210. So this is using the, the box to get the answer, and this is using the combination equations to get the answer. Okay, another one. Now, you can use the binomial theorem to expand any power of a binomial expression. So, here's an example of how to expand it using the general terms. Best way to do this is do this through an example. So, before we can do that, we have to remember that each term can be expressed as a general term ncr times x to the power of n minus r times y to the r. And you're to, for example number three, let's use the binomial theorem to expand each binomial, relating it to both Pascal's triangle and combinations. State the degree of each term. So what are we looking at here? Well, we have a plus b to the power of 4. So a plus b to the power of 4 means that we have to expand this. So how are we going to expand it? Well, we're going to use this process. First of all, we have n choose 0, so 4 choose 0, times a to the power of 4, b to the power of 0. So, n ch so whatever this choose part is the beginning. We start with 4 on the highest, 0 on the lowest, and the same in the exponents. When we add these exponents, the degree will be 4 for this expression. And you'll notice that each term will always have a degree of 4. So, the next part. 4 choose 1 times a to the power of 3, b to the power of 1. Then we go to 4 choose 2, which is times a to the power of 2, b to the power of 2, plus 4 choose 3 a to the power of 1 times b to the power of 3 plus 4 choose 4 times a to the power of 0 times b to the power of 4. So we need to simplify this. So 4 choose 0 is a to the 4 times b to the 0 which is a to the 4 plus 4 a3b plus 6 a2b squared a squared b squared plus 4 a1, b3, a, a, b3, a, b to the power of 3, plus b to the 4. If you notice the coefficients, you'll see that the coefficients match the f row 4 on the Pascal's triangle. And notice that the coefficients match the row 4 on the Pascal's triangle. You'll also know that this has an exponent of 4 right here, so you know which row to go to. And it's just important that you know how to expand something like this. So I'm going to introduce another one. So p plus q to the power of 6. We need to expand this. So we have uh, 1 p6 q0 plus 6 p5 q1 and so on. I'm just going to write these out. Hopefully you're seeing where I'm getting all of these numbers from. Remember that you start off with 6, which is the number, choose 0, and p will have this, the first uh, variable will be the highest number, and the second variable will be the lowest number, which is nothing, so 6 choose nothing. And what happens is the p-values actually go down, the exponents on the p-values go down, and the exponents on the q-values actually start going up, so that at the end, we start we end up with the same numbers but reversed. This time p will be 0 and q will be 6. Ultimately, type this in your, you simplify this expression without any of the choose or any of that extra stuff and we find out that it's p to the 6 plus 6p to the, p to the 5 times q and so on. 
So all of these values are the simplified version of the numbers up here. Notice all the ones disappear, the zeros don't exist, so we end up with this. This is the simplified version using binomial theorem from Pascal's triangle. Now, 3q plus 2p all to the power of 4. What does that mean? Well, this one's a little tougher, folks, so walk, walk through it with me. You end up with 1. Now, remember, it's to the power of 4, so we're lucky we only have 5 terms we have to worry about. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And now, what we have to do is plug in 3q. 3q, we're going to underline in green and put all the 3q's together and put the 2p's together. So 1 is 3q squared, oh sorry, to the power of 4, times 2p to the power of 0, plus 4 times 3p to the power of, sorry, 3q to the power of 3, and 2p to the power of 1, plus, and the reason why we're using plus all the time is because there's a plus here, folks. So plus 6 times 3q to the power of 2 and 2p to the power of 2 plus 4 times 3q to the power of 1 times 2p to the power of 3 plus the last bit 1 times 3q to the power of 0 times 2p to the power of 4 and we have to find the, those numbers well, we do this by expanding it. Now, the 81 comes from 3 to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4 is 81. That's where we got 81 from. Q4 and P is gone. The next one we have is 4 times 3 cubed times 2. 4 times 3 cubed times 2 is 216. Q3, P1. Plus... 6 times 9 times 4 is 216 q squared p squared plus 4 times 3 times 2 cubed is going to be 96 q p cubed and the last one 1 times 3 q to the power of 0 times 2 p to the power of 4 well 2 goes to the power of 4 which is 16 p to the power of 4 Okay, so I want to go back to the last thing, just the last thing to understand from Pascal's triangle, and then we're done, folks. I want you to understand how to be able to get a number. So, for example, let's look at one, uh, the position number of, let's say, a simple one like this one. What's that position number? Well, C10 is, this number is equal to, row 5 term 4 so row 5 term 4 so row 5 yeah term 4 okay 5 choose 4 will give us 10 how do we get 5 choose 4 how was it derived before we learned combinations how did you get 10 well we got that from taking row 4 row 4, so the previous row, and what we're doing is adding 4 choose 3 plus 4 choose 4. 4 choose 3, so that 4 choose 3 is the 6, plus 4 choose 4, which is 4, 6 plus 4, is equal to 10. So it's these two combinations to give us 10. Well, that's 5 choose 4 is equal to 4 choose 3 plus 4 choose 4. And that is known as the Pascal's identity. Okay, folks, that's the end of the lesson. Have a numerical day.